both my friends and neighbors tell me that they have uh, up and down limits on their um, boat lifts. Like over there, he's got two boat lifts, and he walks out and he switches the thing on and he goes about his business. In the meantime, the boat gets lowered into the water or the boat gets raised out of the water and they have to stand there. With mine, I had here, I had a momentary switch that is a switch where you had to. There was spring loaded, so you'd press it to hold it up, press it to hold it down, which was okay. But the fact of the matter is when you start running this thing, you see how slowly it runs, and you don't want to be standing here for 20 minutes while your, your boat is going into the water. So just to give you an idea of how slow that is. So that gives you the idea. Now I just changed over, this is a really old uh, controller and I bought it from a guy and then uh, they, they had a remote control. The remote control, the, the button itself was in a box in my garage and it got uh, got flooded during the, uh, dur during Idalia I had water come into the garage. So it destroyed it and they don't they don't support that anymore. Not only do they not support that, there's two generations past that. So I bought the new controller and the new remote control switch so that when you come up in your boat and you want to lower or raise the thing, especially when you're alone, you can press the button just like a garage door opener and the receiver here will turn your uh, lift on or off however you need it to go. All right. So I just installed that. That's this box here. And you know, there was some switching around here, plus the uh, new button that's in the, the house currently. But then I said, okay, so what I did is I took the momentary switch out of here, and I got a heavy-duty, uh, this is the low-voltage side of this thing. I got 230 volts running the motors, and the, these are the contactors for the motors. And this is the low-voltage side. There's a transformer here, so this is, I think, only 20 volts. But regardless, uh, so I got a heavy duty switch, and this is a on off on switch. So it's got three positions that's um, a single pole, double throw, single pole, double throw. Okay, because you're only switching one side. Then I said, well, the problem is if I were to switch this to make it go down or make it go up and walk away so I could go and, you know, get a cooler full of drinks or, you know, towels or, you know, take care of whatever I got to take care of. If I were to let this thing continue to draw, it would just draw this whole mechanism up into the thing and it would destroy something. Something's got to give. The cables are, um, these are, are stainless. They, they have like a 6,000 pound burst strength rating. And so it's going to wreck something. It's going to wreck this stuff. It's going to wreck the motor. It's going to break out the gears, whatever. So I said, okay, so smarty pants, what are you going to do about that? Well, as this motor runs and the capstan draws this uh, cable up onto the, the shiv here, that continues to move this direction. So if I know where this cable is at the highest point, then I can turn off the motor by installing a switch over here. I'm actually going to install the switch over here. I'll show you that in a second. And then the same thing in the down position. Now, the, the down position is not as dangerous, although potentially you could unwind this thing fully and then start winding it up again, just, just saying. But let's say, for example, that the, the problem is that if you have a um, if you have a, a, a slack in the cable, but because this has hit the bottom of the river, and right now we've got about seven or eight feet of water here, but it could be as low as two feet. I mean, this is very, very high tide right now. It just happens to be. Um, but if it, if it goes all the way down to the bottom, during a low tide, you want to launch the boat, and this goes all the way to the bottom, you'll get slack in here, and then all of a sudden, all of this stuff goes cattywampus on you. 
you know, and then you got a problem because you got takes four people in order to get this thing all rewound. If the uh, so you need to have a down switch also, and I'm going to do the same thing here. So what I did was I found I happen to select this, but you could do any switch that you want, and you'll see this has. Uh, is a made in China like everything else these days. Well, these were fairly inexpensive. This switch is, what I liked about it, it is waterproof, heavy, heavy duty. This is stainless steel. It's got a boot on it, so it's like weatherproof. And the only thing is I'm gonna mount it on the bottom side here, so it will be out of the sun, which is good, because sun beats the hell out of everything here. And it'll be out of the, the rain and so on and so forth. But you know, I have salt air, so, uh, hopefully this and it's and it's fully sealed all right so this whole thing is fully sealed and you see it has um, common uh, red uh, the red wire is normally closed NC black wire is common blue is normally open and then you have green is ground so those are the colors <sighs> I got visitors. So what you do is you wire this thing to be normally closed and when the switch gets activated it would be normally open. I'm sorry, we go to open, it would open the circuit. So it would be wired and normally closed, but when when the wire hits the uh, trigger, so I'm gonna mount it right up here like this. Whoops just like that and you can see as this wire continues to move in that direction it will eventually hit this and it will open that and it'll, it'll open that circuit so then I run the wire back over here into the panel and I would wire either here oops, either here or here which are the two wires that run the contactors. I got this is live, so I can't touch anything inside. But, um, so anyway, I'm going to break that wire, and I'm going to wire the switch in there, so that if the switch is down or up, and it's coming, 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 when it hits there, it will open this wire. It'll open the circuit, or in whichever wire it is, the the up circuit. It'll open it, so the, the motors will shut off. And then the same thing. I'll mount, mount another switch over here. That will do essentially the same thing. Of course, I have to put it in the right position so I know where to mount the switch exactly when this thing is on the bottom. I don't know, you know, this, it'll probably be in, you know, here someplace, but I don't know that yet. So that's the plan anyway. Um, makes perfect sense to me. And then the other thing that I had to do is, that's the switch, I got two of them, one for the up, one for the down. This is, um, you know, I'll poke a hole through the, the cabinet and I'll run the wire inside. I'll probably do it from the bottom so that there's less chance of water getting in. Um, and this clamps down on the wire. There's a, a rubber seal here and you clamp this down and it crushes down on that rubber washer to hold the water from getting in this way. And then you poke a hole through the cabinet and you the cabinet would be captured between this nut and this nut in here. Okay, so that's the thing, and of course, you know, then I'll wire it in there. I'll break that and and wire these things together. So that's the uh, you know the drills that come from places like China and whatever. They're all for shit. They're they're never ground properly for for cutting. So I just sharpen this. Hopefully it'll. I I I don't I do them all by hand, but there's a certain way that I, I mean I have a lot of experience. So I was. I worked in that industry, so I worked in the uh, automotive industry for a long time, so I know a lot about tooling, and and I and I made this by by hand, uh, you know, sharpen it by hand, but I don't have a machine. But anyway, so what I've done is I I made a square line across here so that I can mount the switch properly, and then I marked the two spots and and drilled them with a um, with a punch. <laughs> the 
another hole right here. I punched it. Okay, oops. <clears throat> So that's going to go right here, like that. There's the two holes. They line up with these two holes. That's to make that square, and you can see where the, the wire is. Whoops. So I have... Come on, baby. There we go. These were the only screws that I had available. So, but they're st they're they're stainless, which is yeah, everything's got to be stainless. And I'm hoping. And these this happens. To, I just had happen to have these things, which was good. But they um, oops. These are nylon jam nuts which is great because then i don't have to work oh and i guarantee that those are not uh get out of here i guarantee you see the stainless hardly has any but if if it's true the 304 has some uh, some magnetism, but not much. And 316 has virtually no magnetism. So that's how you can tell what grade of stainless you have. So there is like virtually no chance that I could pick that up with a magnet. Sometimes, you know, if it's a steel piece, if it's a steel piece, you can pick it up. And this is a really strong magnet. But when it's stainless, uh, 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 let go. When it's stainless, you can forget it. It ain't coming off. All right, so I gotta find another nut. Damn it. You notice how I keep this handy because of all the shit that I drop in. What we're gonna do? I'm gonna be smart. Otherwise, we'll be here all free. Watch me drop the pliers in the river. What do you want to bet? Ha! Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you get lucky. Save me about a half an hour's worth of fiddling around, huh? So we don't know exactly where, you know, if, if it had to be perfect, uh, we'd do something a little bit differently, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So we'll end up attaching this over here somewhere, running it down here, 
running it in the underside and then making our connections inside the box. And now I, I need to um, actually need to run it. Look at all the crap in the water, Jesus. The wind has actually died down quite a bit. It was like really, really windy earlier. Anyway, so that's there. And you notice how that'll that'll click that off. And when you go down. Now there's space. So that's the plan. And it looks like it's a good plan. So now I'll have auto up, auto down with safety. All right, I have to, uh, I have to take a break and come back to this in a little bit because I got some things I gotta do. All right. So this is a continuation. I, um, the, the switch is mounted. I haven't run it inside the, the panel yet, but what I did do this morning is uh, I ran the, the cradle for the boat lift down into the water to the very bottom of the river so you can see the uh, the shoal out there it's low tide or thereabouts it's it's not quite as low as it normally is I mean at low it, you know low tide varies but this is as low as I want the, the lift to ever go um, this is enough in order to float the boat off of here in, in the event that it's a low tide and what you'll see is on here's the capstan and this is the the wire is now here there's uh there's about five wraps here and you'll notice that the only thing that holds this in is the cable is stuck through a hole in the the uh the rod and then there's five wraps um, shown here. Each wrap here incidentally represents about one foot worth of raising or lowering. If you think about uh, the diameter of, let's say this is three inches, uh, maybe it's, I don't know, it's about three inches. So, you know, three times pi, pi 3.141516. Um, so that's maybe 10 inches on, on a wrap, three times three and a half or whatever. So that's um, you know, nine, 10, 11, 11 inches maybe for each wrap. So the next step then is to take the, this other switch and mount it such that as this, as this unwraps, it will strike the switch. So that's about the location where I'm gonna put the switch. I'll spot it and drill it so that this cable as it unwraps will move to the right. And as it moves to the right, as it unwraps, it will hit the switch and turn off the, the power to the uh, downward side. <laughs> Let me see if I can get the switch mounted without dropping the hardware into the into the river. <laughs> All right. You know, ideally, ideally, I maybe should have mounted these uh, these switches on a plate where I could adjust them, you know, side to side or something. But I'm expecting that once I get them in the right location, that 
they won't have to be moved again. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm hoping that's the case. That just means I guess drilling more holes, but so um, And there it is. It's it's snug here against the uh, the cable, and then this is the lower limit, and this is the upper limit. So the last piece of this I I can strap to that. That keeps the wire out of being damaged, and then it went over here. So I I have to find something to do that with. So it'll give me a minute. Um, uh, I don't have any uh, stainless um, staples uh, or anything like that and quite honestly I have some um, I have uh, uh, tie wraps but the problem with tie wraps is the only ones that you can use in the sun are the black ones. I, I have some of those here somewhere. They might be on the boat, I'm not sure. But the problem with that is even those eventually they give way. And once I put these up, I don't want them to I don't want them to uh, come off again and I don't want to have to deal with it once they're in place. So what I thought I would do instead is I'm gonna cut a little piece of uh, this is aluminum. This is an old street sign, which I use for something else. And you can see I've cut a bunch of pieces away from here. But I'm just going to let go. I'm going to cut a little piece of this, smooth out the edges, and I can use. The, I'm going to make two of these, um, smooth out the edges, and I can make use them for. Um, straps to hold it, those things up against the and I'll use some copper wire since I don't have any stainless wire Here, like 
so Please don't fall in the water, please. So that keeps these out of harm's way. Then I'll wire, uh, I'll wire this one to that one just to keep it up there. And we'll put the other one over here someplace. Okay, that takes care of that, I guess, huh? Next thing is that I gotta run these into the box. I can do that. I'm gonna do them on the underside here, I guess. One of the, th I don't understand why they don't standardize on stuff, but they don't. Um, every one of these screws that you buy has a different head on it, so there's the traditional um, Phillips. There's the Torx heads like um, like these are little stars. And then there's the square heads, which they use, I don't know why, but they use primarily in furniture. And Torx 20 drive. <laughs> Just so that I would know what that take with me when I go outside. Anyway, and then I have uh, I brought a piece. This is regular wire out of a Romex thing, but we'll just support these off of the back here. I I don't know the um. Here's the here's the little uh, rubber thing. It's actually tapered. There's the rubber washer that provides your watertight seal, and here's the nose piece, which is too small. So whoops. That's the nut. This is what I should have been holding on to. Okay, so anything that got in the way <clears throat> should have been opened up a little bit. And then we take all these pieces together. The washer is still on there. So here's the nut that goes on through the cabinet. Here's the seal on the end and here is the nose piece. So I'm just going to drop that in there so I don't lose it before I get it on the wire. And there's the nose piece. I think that's the one. All right, so it's going to be half inch through the cabinet. So
so that a drill will cut this is this is where all the business is done right here this is called the lip this in the center is called the chisel there's almost no cutting power at the center so that's why when you have a large diameter drill you put a small drill for, through first in order to clear that space in the middle and let the big drill do the, the work. But this is called the lip, and the lip must extend out beyond the rest of the heel, which is over here. So when you look at it, you look to see the center of the drill. Here's a lip here and a lip here. That it needs to be centered. This is the chisel point in the middle right here. And then the relief needs to be, if, as you look at the drill, absolutely from the side. This has some relief to it, so this might cut. But typically, I found that most of these drills don't. They put them in like a pencil sharpener, and that doesn't sharpen a drill. When you sharpen a drill, this included angle point generally is 118 degrees, unless uh, they also make them in 135. Those are the two the two angles that which are standardized but 118 is what you'll find almost all drills so um, when you sharpen them you sharpen them up against the wheel like this and you bring it up like that and that will give you the relief to get the heel the hell out of the way of the lip so that the heel can penetrate whatever it is you're trying to drill in so anyway that, that's my it's my bitch today I don't know for, for a soft material like uh, that case which is like a fiberglass I think this should probably work okay you know you can you can burn through it um, but um, all right I need to turn off the power so let me you'll notice that um, with some some force you can get this through but you can see the little fingers out here so that this will work anyway <sighs> oh, excuse me and show you for a second this is a switch that I took out of over here this had uh, just spade type terminals on it. So this was your, your common, and here was your up, and here was your down. But you'd have to sit there and hold it, and you saw how long it took to go up or down. All right, so this is what they call momentary. And this is a uh, latching on and off, okay. They make these boxes out of it so it looks like a it's plastic obviously but it looks like a uh, looks like a fiberglass or at least because it stands up to the weather I mean honestly I'm gonna have to wiggle this just a little bit I was doing the future me a, a service by labeling everything that I could in here so that if I ever have to come in here again of course my memory is not what it used to be and um, These are meant to go through a metal panel. They should be long enough, but I don't know, maybe they're not. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. 
So as it turns out, I didn't lose the nut. <laughs> I did. I just, uh, whatever. It was on the, the, the kitchen counter where I opened up the diameter of that, uh, that, uh, that situation there that... <laughs> losing my mind. I'll set that right there for a second. enough something was holding out there I could take a pair of pliers and snug that up a little bit but I guess that's not going anywhere all right so uh, this is the the downstream the down switch so that would interrupt this wire here. to push the other one <laughs> all right I'm just using this nose cone to push this uh, this washer up the wire I can go get another one and do the same thing all over again okay so that's about where it needs to go okay so there's my washer this is here the fingers will go into into the pocket here and squeeze down and the wire will be coming up through there. Now take this off of here, set it up there just for the time being. I'm going to put Oof. What a chore. All right. So then we're going to open up this wire so we can make our connection. You want to be real careful not to um, to open up the insulation on the wires inside of the case. So you just want to be very shallow here. And th this uh, insulation will strip away this out outer um, core will strip away fairly easily, even though you're not all the way through. Okay. 
I didn't even go all the way through the... green to any ground source in here so it could go into this bus here or this bus here they're tied together this is the neutral bus this is a ground bus but these are the same thing and this is only for safety in case you get you don't want to get fried but this is keep in mind this is only 24 volt um, a 24 volt service so now I have to look at these and Normally closed is red and black is common. So these are normally closed and they will open when you bump into them. So they're both going to be normally closed. So I, I'm only going to use the red and the black. That's it. And since it's a switch, the, the uh, current can run through it in either direction. The red and the black. And then the green, I'm going to find some place where I can ground them. I'll do that later, but I'll strip the insulation now. Now, I like soldered connections for a lot of reasons, not the least of which, once they're soldered, you don't have to worry about, um, well, you have to worry a lot, a lot less about a corroding connection. Um, and then cr creating a problem for you later that you have to go in. All right, so <laughs> I, brought, I brought these things out here, but I've never used them before, and I don't want to use them now because this is too important to me. But essentially, you have uh, these. This is shrink tubing, which you can put on the, around the outside. These are the uh, these are the connectors, and they got a solder on the inside, and you slide the wires into the center. And then you heat this thing and it melts the solder. There's a low temperature solder and it does your connection and it closes off the ends. And I guess maybe you put the stuff on the outside, but I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do a standard, and they come in different sizes, obviously. I'm going to do a standard um, solder. So. This is a new package of shrink tubing. These are all pre-cut to a you know given length, doesn't really matter. The key to this is remember to put the shrink tubing on before your you do your solder work, otherwise you'll be taking it apart and redoing it. <laughs> Alright. So this this appears to be about the right size. So these are the ones we're going to use today. And I'm going to cut this wire. This is the this is the down wire that runs the contactor. So we're going to put that switch in line with this this wire here. So I strip off a little bit. Whoops, I strip off a little bit. I remember to put on my shrink <laughs> my shrink tubing. <laughs> It's not positive or negative, and um, so we need two pieces. One will go on one side. 
and you want to make sure that you're well away from your joint with it. Yeah, it's got to be on your wire, but you want it to be far away from your joint <laughs> because if while you're doing your soldering, the the, the the shrink tubing heats up near the joint, it will shrink it down, and you won't be able to use it anyway. So you get it the hell away from your joint. Okay, and then we're going to take our red and our black, which are the ones that we're going to use here. Come on, red and black. I'm going to put one on the red, and I just... You need to make a mechanical connection wherever you can. So you take them and you typically you cross them fairly close to where they're going to, they're going to be, and then you wrap this wire around this one wire. And then you wrap this one wire around this wire. And you try to keep all your little spikies the hell out of the way because you don't want that either. Then we're going to do the same thing with the red. Yeah, video didn't catch uh, doing a uh, solder very well, so I thought I would do a demonstration just so that you can see what's going on. But when you have two wires that need to be joined, you take them and you wrap the, the ends, you strip them back, you know, three quarters of an inch or so, and you cross them like an X, like this. And then you, as you hold them, you wrap the one end around the base of the first one, like that, making sure that you don't have any stray wires hanging out, sticking out, and that's important later if you're going to put uh, shrink tubing on there. That's really the only important part of that. And you do the same thing here. You wrap this uh, wire around the base of the other wire, and now you have a nice smooth transition, and it's also got some mechanical strength this way. Okay. And then, of course, you've already put your if you if you're doing this in a in an installation, you put your shrink tubing on and keep it outside of the range of your joint because you're going to add heat, and when you add heat, uh, the shrink tubing is going to shrink. So, what you start uh, doing here is you I start by taking a little bit of solder and I put a, a drop on the end of my. Um, soldering iron just to give it a little heat and then I set my my uh, joint into that so that I'm now transferring the heat because the key to it is getting heat into the joint and then you put your solder onto the wire because that's what you're trying to end up with and as soon as you have that wetting action where it draws it into the joint you're done now that's it. You let this cool and you slide your shrink tubing over the top of it and then you heat it and this will be a nice solid joint. And there's physical strength to that. Again, you have no spikies going through your, your tubing, your uh, shrink tubing, which potentially could short on something and, and then you're done. Uh, be very careful about solder. Solder will not stick to stuff that it's not meant to stick to, but it will burn your skin. So don't drop it on yourself. But if you accidentally drop it onto some other surface, it will not stick. It will not, you know, make a bond like on a wire. So, all right, so that's the end of the, the soldering lesson, but I wanted to make sure that I got that in. All right, you cross them like that the one wire around the one wire and you wrap the other wire around the other wire and keep your little spikies the hell out of the way and now you're ready to solder this is rosin core solder you use rosin core for electrical and you use acid core for uh, plumbing Although I use, uh, I sometimes use flux, and what I do, what I typically do is I put a little uh, solder on my iron, 
and it's important that you heat up your joint because you want the solder to flow into the wire into the joint to make it permanent and there you go okay same thing here Try to get that halfway up your... Oh, shoot. And the same thing with this one. Oops, you know what? It has a little pokey out of the back, but it's not one. It's it's not like a single strand, so it's going to be okay. But again, it's important that if if you have some um, all right. This, uh, yeah, this is a viable one. Okay, good. So I just take these, fish them through this mess of wire. As you can tell, I'm not an electrician. <laughs> and I stick this into that hole over there. And then I tighten this down on that, and these all that those grounds are all together, all tied together. So that gives the if there's a short, it gives the power that that path back to the panel. So that's all there is to that. Okay, so we're all, we're done. Um, the only thing is to make this neat. You know, you can you can route these somehow. Um, get them the heck out of the way but what I want to do now is I'm going to test before I close up the panel oh, um, these are for normally open and I'm not going to use them so typically what I do is I would wrap these just to keep them I'm not going to cut it I mean you could cut them off if you wanted to but I usually hold on to them because what happens if in the future you decide to change your your feature somehow and you want to do something different now you've cut off the wire so you're adding wire on which is never a pleasant situation so I just wrap these around until I get to a point and stick them under so that they're there so we're all oops is that right yeah okay so that they're there all right so now I'm going to power up and we're going to test our installation to see if it works up and down so give me a second so power is back on. Okay. Going up. Going down. This might not be in the right place. I might have to move the switch. I might have to. Because, um, going down now but this might not be enough to keep this from unwinding
that's how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's your upper limit, and that's, you know, how high up could you have, actually, with this boat lift, how high up could you actually have that boat? I mean, that's it, you know. So, it works. I'm, I'm happy. I'm tickled to death. This is in the up position. It won't go any higher. Turn it back to neutral. Ooh, what was that all about? Normally the boat probably won't be up that high, but you know, I'm just saying. So, but anyway, the, the, the point of the matter is to keep this whole mechanism from being drawn in here, busting up the cables or breaking the gears or something, you know? Anyway, I'm, I'm tickled to death, it's okay. I still, I'm gonna have to move this, this uh, switch, I think. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, use this hole here will be at this location and I'll drill one more hole over here so it's just that much farther over there just as a safety. The other thing that I could do quite honestly is I could dig when the you know when the war, war, when the when the weather is warmer I could get in the in the river and actually dig out from underneath that thing so that I won't have any um, you know I want this to go as low as possible that's the key. Um, chances are I won't, won't launch the boat when the water is like super low anyway. All right, but I'm tickled. That's, uh, that's a success. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe, give me a like, give me some comments, tell me how stupid I am. <laughs> uh, whatever. It's, uh, it's all good. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying actually making these videos, so. All right, we're off. We're out. Peace out. Love. Bye.